absolutely, absolutely, Hamish. Wonderful stuff. We send love and blessings to them all. Yes. Yes, and yes. to you, my dear fellow, that was absolutely lovely. Thank you. No bother, Scotty. Uh, God bless, Scotty. God bless you. Happy birthday, belatedly, and dinky do. Thank you, do, Scotty. Thanks very much. Thanks, Hamish. God bless, sir. There we are. That's big Hamish. Lovely, safe in the arms of Jesus. Um, it, it takes me back to childhood, that safe in the arms of Jesus, safe at his gentle breast, thereby his love o'ershadowed. Sweetly my soul doth rest. That not lovely stuff. So there we go. Fantastic. You're listening to Scotty McClue. We're live with Scotty McClue's Nightline. We're on Nation Radio. Back with you after this. Nation Radio. Is Alzheimer's affecting your life? Glasgow Memory Clinic are looking for volunteers to take part in research studies for potential new Alzheimer's medicines. For over 15 years, we've been at the forefront of Alzheimer's research in Scotland. Find out if we have a research study that may be suitable for you. We believe the best way to shape the future is to be proactive. Glasgow Memory Clinic, continuing to pioneer new treatments for Alzheimer's. Call us on 0141 948 0206 or see glasgowmemoryclinic.com. Advertising on 96.3 Nation Radio works. Hi, I'm David. I'm the market manager at the Forge Markets. We have been looking at a number of different advertising opportunities. We've done some print press, but we felt that the radio would get us a bigger reach in the Glasgow area and help drive footfall back into the markets. I honestly found radio advertising to be very, very affordable. I didn't realise how affordable it actually was until we, we took the plunge uh, and started advertising on Nation Radio. To find Find out how you can reach 52,000 weekly listeners. Contact the Nation Radio sales team. Email sales at nationradio.scot. Live across Glasgow and the West, this is Scotty McClue's Nightline on Nation Radio. Call Scotty now on 0141 811 0475. Don't forget the house rules. No offensive language, or you'll get a lifetime ban. Oh, and we don't want that again, of course. We did have a wee swearer tonight, but we lifted that out for you and um, sent him down the road. It was nothing intentional. There was no malice in it. Just a poor soul that forgot himself. Or forgot his cell, as we say, in Glasgow and the West Central Scotland. Lovely to have you with us. A very warm welcome to the telephones as quickly as possible. Number once again, for the heart of thinking and the slow study, 0141811 or Four seven five for the sharp ones. You'll have it either down with the stub of a hard black pencil and a thruppenny dot with knee batter beside your telephones, or you'll have programmed it into your phone. Scotty McClue's nightline just for you, Dinky Doo. Back to the telephones, Anna. Hello, Scotty. Hello, my darling. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Well, we speak a dual language on here, so forgot themselves or forgot himself. I know. Uh, well, I always listen to Linda at the beginning. You mm. know, and I love to hear her. But then it takes me quite a while to eventually get through to you. But, it's wonderful uh, to hear you. They're very much appreciated. Oh, yes. I just thought I'll give you a wee phone. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I keep always keep it light and quick. You're great, <laughs> you're great. Just light and, and quick. Just, <laughs> and I was just thinking, you know, Mr. Jax, is he not adorable? Oh, he's a lovely man. He's lovely. He's, he's very, very funny. He's a lovely man and he's so no down to earth. And yes. um, it was, it was, I hear all the talk about, you see, as you know, I'm not on Facebook anymore. No. And, no, I, I don't uh, work my... Computer with, anymore. With but um, mm. whoever the lady was, she she's um, a disgrace to the nation. She's a and, disgrace to the nation. And I was just thinking, Scotty, you know the, the business I, you know that uh, I was in the same yes. theatrical business as yourself. And um, my God, I used to get a lot of hassle. Mm-hmm. Oh, you that. do. I really did, and. One in particular was from the press. Uh huh. Jealousy, it, Anna. Terrific jealousy. It's jealousy. It's green cheese. Jealousy. Yes, yes. And, it's and green cheese all the time. It's green cheese, and I just couldn't believe it. And then my agent phoned and she said, Anna, 
chucked in the press and the phone, ch- you know, blah, blah. Uh-huh. I said, well, hold on, I'll get on to my lawyer. And uh, uh, my lawyer had to deal with it. And yes. said to the, the particular newspaper, he said, I'll take yes. you for all you have. If yes. I see my client's name ever mentioned again. And yes. it was all rubbish. Yes, of course. Of you course. Know, so I've been through it, Scotty. Absolutely. And I know how you feel. And I remember, it was very funny because I remember that uh, we had several red top tabloids chasing McClure at one point. And I said to them, I said, look, boys, keys. I said, I am not that interesting a person. I'm not really worthy of your time. I said, uh, you know, I read books and stuff like that. So, oh, you know, you know, all, all that kind of thing. It, anyway, more it, in your wee pinky than all of them. Well, one of them says to me then, we know, we followed you for three months. <laughs> oh, God. Honestly. I told them, I said, I'm really quite a dull character when it, when what, it comes to, I you know. Like. <laughs> oh, I know exactly. Do you know what I would love, Scotty? Mm. I'd love us all maybe to pick a venue. Yes. For all the, for, for all the old days, like Mr. Jacks and... And then um, all the we uh, big Amy's and we genie and all of us to get together just a chat with you. I would love that. And I I'd just have big, a blather. I and I'd make a big pot of minestrone. Oh, lovely. And uh, you know, Mr. Stoney. it would be lovely, wouldn't it? Oh, fantastic! <laughs> a chat with all because I mean I feel it's like a, a family. It is you know, a family. Some people are there saying, oh, we don't want the regulars on all the time. Uh-huh. But the regulars are, are friends. Yes, absolutely, and I think I think what, what I think what Michelle was actually getting at, she was saying, you know, you also need to have a mix of things. Well, we do have a mix. Oh, we do. You know? We do have a mix, but you've got to you've got to keep having a mix because um, I think what's what's difficult to do is to um, because we're so stowed out the door and step it through. I know. We've kind of got to get one collar off before we get the next one on kind of thing, exactly. you know what I mean? It's, it's I that kind of thing. And I used to just cut between all the different collars. And we I used know. to sometimes put two collars on together. I know, Scotty, I know. So the pair of you sort it out, you know? Oh, no, it's been it's been wonderful tonight. Uh, it's it's really excellent show sure tonight. It was fantastic. Outstanding. Linda, really, and the lovely Linda after her. Sounds a lovely lady. Outstanding, yes. Oh, no, yes. it's absolutely super. But, uh, but Linda, I just hope Linda gets strong and well. I hope so, Scott. They sort that out, Fran. Thank you again for introducing her to the show because she's oh, a, an a absolute, pleasure. you know, I mean, her stuff is beautiful, you know. Oh, it's beautiful. It's and, uh, you're beautiful. Uh, oh, thank you. Absolutely, but we know this. <laughs> I won't keep you, darling. I've got so many things that I could talk about. Oh, I know. But listen, see, you and I, if you and I got into it, we could be on all night. We'd be on all it night. Could be, it could be the Anna and Scotty show. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, well, you never know. You never know. We never, never know what's know, round darling. the corner. Anyway, anyway, you take care, Scotty. Bless you, Anna, and, and lots of love. And um, t- say, say to me you're wonderful Italian. Oh, buona notte, sognadoro. Buona notte, sognadoro. Buona notte, e sognadoro. Buona notte, e Oh, bless you, my darling. Night, night. Oh. Night, night, God bless. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> what an angel! What an angel! There we are. That's our Anna, fantastic lady. Oh one four one eight double one oh four seven five. Good night and have golden dreams in Italian, Italian, Italiano. Wonderful stuff. Um, oh one four one eight double one oh four seven five. And we'll go back to the telephones very shortly. We have so much to talk about tonight and so little time to do it in. I can't believe. Leave it. I'm just having a quick look at the station clock here 
and it's just coming up to 10 minutes past 11. They are 23.09 in new money. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of you who are on Scotty McClue's uh, Facebook page as well. Tremendous. Get yourselves onto that and follow Scotty McClue at Scotty McClue on Twitter. Follow Nation Radio, Nation Radio Scotland. Like the page. I think we've got 6,500 of you on there, which is tremendous. Thank you for that. And of course, Twitter at Nation Scotland. Back to the telephones, Alan. Scotty. Hello. Sorry, it's good to hear your voice again. Good um, to hear uh, you. I think the last time I heard for your voice, it was before I was myself. Um, back in the ah. Alan, you've not got your, your radio up, have you? No, do you know what? Hang on, I'd like to turn up and end if it's an option. No, it's an hands free, hang on. You're an hands free, that's what's doing it. Right, yeah. no, that's it, right. It, it, just, it, 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 voice, so. it sounded as if you were duking for apples there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, back in the 90s, Scotty, good old times. Oh, fantastic. Yes, yeah, um, the Scots FM. The and I'll be hoping that everybody else is glad to hear you back again. Lovely. I found you, I found the lobster. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely true. Glad to have you back, my life, sir. Oh, Dinky lovely do. to hear you. Dinky do, Alan. All the best. What a nice man. <laughs> so there you go. Ta -da, la la. There we are. That's uh, our Alan. Of course, he was on a hands free there. It sounded as if he was talking underwater. It sounded like a documentary. And here we are now, just approaching the whale. <laughs> Oh one four one eight double one oh four seven five is the telephone number. Get your calls in and let's chit chat. Lots to talk about tonight. We've been talking about uh, Brexit. Um, you know, now don't get fed up with this. You hang on in there. I think if we wanted an absolute cracker of a deal from the U from the EU, the trick would be to remain to actually phone them up tomorrow and say we are remaining. Back to the telephones, Barry. Hello, thank you, Scotty. How are you keeping? Thank you, do. Better for hearing you. It's always good to hear my callers. Absolutely. They, um, I want to talk about the diplomatic immunity. Um, yes. I feel that as if the diplomatic immunity gets used, uh, well, gets abused um, to, you know, that person's advantage. You know how that young chap who... Yes, um, yes. Well, we'll not go into the, the specific cases. No, 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 uh, no, no. No, we're not going into specific cases, but... Yes. Bad diplomatic immunity, yes. Well, under the Geneva Convention, Diplomatic Immunity Act of 1963, no person or persons um, can be detained once diplomatic immunity has been sought. But I think that people do kind of use it, obviously, to... Um, to, their, to, to their advantage to get out of things and if that's the case it likes of you know accidents and things like that in this country do you think diplomatic immunity should be scrapped altogether? No, I don't think a diplomatic mm. immunity should be scrapped altogether it's a modern version of yeah. sanctuary mm. you know, sanctuary was uh, you, you'll understand this in the old cathedrals yeah. you would see a great big lion's head knocker Yep. And that knocker was known as the sanctuary knocker. Mm -hmm. And when somebody was being chased by a foreign power, you know, a battle in the street, sword fights, all that, if they could get to the cathedral, get their hand on the knocker and give it a good bang, the monks would come out and drag them inside and no foreign soldiers were allowed inside the cathedral because that yeah. person had sought sanctuary. Yeah. Now, I think that diplomatic immunity is probably a modern version. I mean, we're talking 1,400 years ago or something. Yeah. But I think yeah. that's that's a, a modern version of, of, of sanctuary is one, one function of diplomatic immunity. Um, but I think that your diplomats have to have a carte blanche to move freely because they're the ones, if you have war, mm -hmm. it's because politics have failed. Yeah. And yeah, okay. the, 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 the diplomats are the ones that are in there trying to fix it so that there's not war. Yeah? 
Okay, so, answer, answer, that, that's where I'm... No, well, I'm just going to finish that. That's where sorry, I'm coming sorry. from. However, yeah. however, mm -hmm. um, there perhaps should be, um, you know, an, an appeal set up yeah. for a certain mm -hmm. instance when you think, look, what's happened here was not connected with diplomacy. That's what I'm trying to say is that if it's not if it's not used within their role as a diplomat and yes. to commit a crime in that country, yes. or, you know, you know, they use a diplomatic immunity immediately. The police cannot touch them, and the law cannot touch them. I think is very unfair because only citizens, if they had done that to them, they would be prosecuted and in prison. So, lengths of extradition, if. A diplomat has committed a crime and escaped, then if that country does not agree to, to, to remove diplomatic immunity and return, then extradition should be either suspended uh, until such time as that person is handed over to authorities because it's not fair on the families that they get away with it and they can't you know, do anything about it because the diplomatic immunity, if the, if the country doesn't waive it, then there's a, there's a problem, you know. Yes, I mean, it's a, it's a very unusual situation and it's one mm. for, uh, you know, to, for people to see how much yeah. law is in that, you know, I mean, how much law is in that, how much is a situation, but just from a humanity point of view. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. You know, and, and also you would say, can there be exceptions? You see, there can't be exceptions if it's diplomatic, but if it's if it's not directly related to diplomacy, no. then no. it should be looked at by both countries. Absolutely, for the for you know for the, for the sake of you know um, you know for for peace between the two countries or the friendship or whatever between the two countries, if a diplomat commits a crime um, and it's not within the rule, then yes, I think diplomatically should be removed and that person should be returned. And if the country says, no, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do that, then then if they want any of our citizens to come over there to be tried in their country, then the government should say, no, I'm very sorry, but that's not going to happen. If you can't do that for us, why should we do that for you? Mm -hmm. You know? I think I think by nature of what diplomacy yeah. is, and yeah. I think the level that diplomats have to operate uh -huh. at, um, yeah. you know, I wouldn't like to see anything that was a threat to diplomacy. Because as I say, no. you know, the the, the 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 actions of a small number of experts can yeah. save the lives of millions. Absolutely. Um, you know? there's, good, there's a lot of good diplomats and, and they do a great job, but there's also ones there who just manipulate it to, you know, for their advantage, you know, just to get out of something because they know if they claim diplomatic immunity, oh, I know the law can't touch me. You know, you always see in films when somebody commits a crime, they always dive into an, an embassy because they know that the, the police or the military cannot enter under the Relations Act of 1963, you know. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, you, you you have to have that. As I say, it's a, it's a latter form of sanctuary. Mm -hmm. But, yes. uh, you know, if it's not directly connected with diplomacy, then I think both countries should be talking. Absolutely, you know? absolutely, Scotty. You know, it only fears fear, because I've already said this and you can get hammered for doing something and a diplomat just says no. I, you know, you can't touch me. You know, I'm here. I also think I also think it's very important for people yeah. to have a moral compass. Yes. You know, and yes. and and think. Look, it's all very well to claim this, but I do. Uh, you know, think I should be saying my piece. As I say, I'm not picking out any particular case. No, um, no, not at all. You know, no, but but I think uh, I think I should be saying my piece. Yes. Um, oh, you know, and, and from that side of it as well. Yeah, I mean, Absol you know. I mean, good luck to them. They, you know, they, they work hard and uh, they do a lot. They, they're sometimes restricted by countries who will not let them see particular people. You know, yeah. the blockage <coughs> in their way. You know, things like that. But it's just the ones who really, you know, you see in the news that do things and say, "Oh, I've claimed this man's immunity." Yes. Oh, the Lord can't touch me, and then they weak them away out of the country, and you know, and that's it. You don't see them again, and the poor people that are left in the country that they've left. Have to yes. up species and they know they can't do anything about it. Yes, it's, it's a very interesting one. Thank you for raising it because it's, it's one of these moot points 
where we, we, we have to look what are we actually doing as a society, as a civilised society, and yeah. also are we protecting those at the top of society uh, in, in, in both ways? Yes, yes. I mean, it has to be addressed, you know. I mean, you know, not putting down any of our of uh, the ones who, you know, work away there, you know, behind the scenes. Yes, yes, because the, the, the other side of it is yeah. you don't want to weaken the uh, the all. strength the strength of diplomacy. So don't weaken it, but don't abuse it. Don't abuse it. Good don't point. Abuse it. Don't abuse Lovely. it. Don't weaken, don't weaken it, but don't abuse it, you know. Don't, don't abuse don't, it. Don't, Yes, and don't don't bring down the other ones who do a good job, you know, by the ones who just do it for their own for their own means, you know. Absolutely. Because, you know, they abuse it, you know. Lovely talking to you. You too, thank you, Scott Scotty. Keep All well. the best, sir. Andrew Dinky do. There we are. Top stuff to the telephones as quickly as possible. We have lots to discuss tonight. So little time to do it in 0141 0475. Some very, very good calls tonight, folks, and some very interesting points. Scotty McClue saying dinky doo to every single one of you. Nation Radio. Have you ever lost money on an investment? If a high street bank persuaded you to buy a stocks and shares ISA, unit trust or investment bond and you lost money, Goodwin Barrett can help you get back thousands of pounds in compensation. Even if you don't have the investment anymore or the paperwork, Goodwin Barrett make it easy to find out. Text money to 6677. That's money to 6677. Goodwin Barrett. You don't need a claims management company to make a complaint and if unsuccessful, you can refer it free to the financial ombudsman. Gem Carpets have been carpeting Scotland for 30 years with a huge selection at unbeatable prices. And right now, we're offering even better value with up to 50% off. So for a massive choice from luxury super soft Saxonies, hard-wearing twists to low-cost loop piles, beautiful laminate or trendy LVT, we've got it covered. Gem Carpets, up to 50% off now. On. Scotty McClue's Nightline 96.3 Nation Radio Call Scotty now 0141 811 0475 Nation, Nation Radio Yes indeed, you're listening to Nation Radio, the country's top radio station, the big one, the one everyone's talking about, the one everyone is listening to spread the word, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Nation Radio just for you 96.3 on the FM and www.nationradio.scot on the internet online also on your smart speakers give it Alexa Play Nation Radio Scotland. Back to the telephone. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Carol. Hello, Scott. Hello, Scotty. Hello, my Hello. dear. How are you tonight? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, Scotty, you were talking about um, people um, eating outside. And yes. you know what? I, I was just thinking, you know, here in Dundee, We've got a bit of a, well, I think everywhere's got a bit of a gull problem. The seagulls. The and, seagulls. You know, I've often thought that, you know, it's a shame too for the, the seagulls because people will eat and, of course, outside they're walking about and then <laughs> the seagulls, it's only natural, the dive bomb, dive bomb people. To get oh, yes. Their, you know, whatever they're eating, the sandwich or, or Well, no, I, I had some chips and uh, and uh, a wee, nice wee curry sauce with a wee tub of curry sauce once and um, it was a summer and we mm -hmm. were down down in a, a Clyde resort and the yeah. seagull just came and took the chip out of my hand. <laughs> I've heard of that, yeah. yeah. You know? They actually took the chip out of my hand. I've heard of, um, the, a wee seagull in our broth, little Stephen <laughs> And he actually walks into a certain baker's yes. and um, he, he helps himself to a packet of crisps or, yes. six, or six rolls a pack and he, he, he makes off with them. Yes, make off with the rolls. Yes, no, absolutely. They're very, very clever. And of course, this is a thing throughout the world because people get shocked. There are signs up in, in attractions in India. Um, you know, do not feed the monkeys because the danger is the monkey will mug you. Oh, no. They'll come and actually take your lunch off you and make off with it. 
cleverer animals. Yeah. Very clever, you know. Very I mean, clever. geniuses. You geniuses, know. you know. So you've just opened your sandwich in India or Africa and bye-bye. So, Scotty, what, what do you think with, with what's going to be happening in uh, Westminster? You know, do you, do you think we're going oh. to get a... Got a, a, a deal? Well, something deal. something shifted. Something shifted the mm. other day. There's absolutely no doubt about that. There was a huge shift. So you know, something's been offered <laughs> um, yeah. to another party, and they're so tight-lipped about it that you know all your top journalists can't get in there. So something. I mean, if nobody's actually you know dropping it into the press, nobody's leaking it. Then you know, obviously, it's 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 on pain off, you know. Um, is, it which, queen, is it the Queen's speech, Scotty? This the um, this coming week. Uh, yes, yeah, well, no, 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 no. We've got the Queen's speech. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as 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 far as I know, we haven't had the Queen's speech. But there's also concern from the other side mm -hmm. that by asking Her Majesty to make that speech, then it's effectively going to be a party political broadcast, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. you know that's uh, mm -hmm. that's not going down too well. I think yeah. there's a lot of raised eyebrows and a lot mm -hmm. of frowned foreheads mm -hmm. about uh, the fact that Her Majesty has been troubled by uh, by all this at all yeah, uh, you yeah. know so so I think there's going to be some you see if if there if there has been a problem mm -hmm. and I'm not saying there has been I'm mm -hmm. choosing my words very carefully but if there has been a problem between the prime minister and the monarch it yeah, could yeah. jeopardize the yeah. the anonymity of the talks yeah, uh, and yeah. and the diplomacy of the talks between them, because yeah. then you know the civil service or the, uh, the 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 senior aides at the palace would be within the rights to say, well, look, we do want a record of the meetings, what was said. Yes, yes. You know, and you don't really yes. want to go down that road because no, every prime minister no. that Her Majesty's had, yes. um, you know, she's uh, these meetings have been able to take place in secret, and both parties can see what they're thinking. Yeah, yeah. No. You know, and I think that prime ministers from Churchill onwards learned very early on that they don't ever try to pull the wool over Her Majesty because she's a lady that knows exactly what's going on. Yes, yes. She's 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 very well briefed and she's oh, highly yes, intelligent. Yes, yeah. So oh, no, you know, I know just that. so so there you go, darling. I'm going to have to run. You okay, take care of yourself. Okay. Yes, okay. and dinky do. Okay, dinky do. Bye. Dinky do. Have a good week. Bye, Carol. Oh one four one eight double one oh four seven five. To the telephones as quickly as possible. We're stout at the door and stamp it through. And I want to get every single one of you on. I want to hear what you've got to say. If you can hear me, then I should be able to hear you. Scotty McClue, just for you. I'll spell it for you. If you're an alien life form from another planet and you've never actually heard of me, Carol. S a small C O double T I E. That's the Scotty and the McClue capital M small C capital C L U E. That is the McClue Dinky Do is the call sign. Back to the telephones, David. How you doing? How you doing, sir? Nice to hear you. Uh, no bad, no bad. So yourself? <laughs> Remarkable. Remarkable. Exactly. You know. <laughs> Love, loving the people coming on this program. I've not been talking to you for a while, so I just thought I would say hello. Too long, David. I've oh, been to a man earlier, you know, and about diplomatic immunity and sanctions. Yes. And stuff like that. Very you interesting. Know, it's funny, I've done, you know, I mean, it's, it's one thing, you know, and I'm, believe it or not, I've been whacked by a motor myself. Uh -huh. I'm a motorcyclist once upon a time, and so I've uh -huh. never had me a motorcycle. And, and I think the girl got scared. And basically, um, I think. Well, we're not. What, what, I, what, I, what I can't. What I can't actually do is discuss that particular case, David. So you know, from from that point of view, I can't actually discuss that. Um, out with out with my jurisdiction, as they say. I get, I get you, I get you. But I think diplomatic immunity is a good thing. But 
as the man was saying earlier, no, not to be. It's, it's meant for the right things, not for the, the right, right purposes. Well, it's meant for and diplomatic it's immunity. Cat, basically, no. Yes, yes. Well, we can't, as I say, I can't go into that, but good to hear from you again. And uh, right, I'll say... Totally I'll, I'll, yourself, shame yourself. Shame and yourself. I, shall, I shall say dinky-doo to you. Fantastic. So there right. we go. 0141 811 Folks, do remember, if you're coming on, I can't discuss particular cases with you that are ongoing. Very, very important. We adhere to that. Uh, so there you go. If you you've just joined us though a very warm welcome you're listening to Scotty McClue and we're live on Nation Radio just for you dinky do. Nation Radio picture a boy he's in his teens in a classroom distracted what do you see a lack of concentration or do you see what we see a young man wondering how he can change the world there are troops on peacekeeping missions that need that right now. Your army needs you. Find where you belong. Sedge Army Jobs. Advertising on 96.3 Nation Radio Works. Hi, I'm David. I'm the market manager at the Force Markets. We have been looking at a number of different advertising opportunities. We've done some print press, but we felt that the radio would get us a bigger reach in the Glasgow area and help drive footfall back into the markets. I honestly found radio advertising to be very, very affordable. I didn't realise how affordable it actually was until we, we took the plunge uh, and started advertising on Nation Radio. To find out how you can reach 52,000 weekly listeners, contact the Nation Radio sales team. Email sales at nationradio.scot. Scotty McClue's Nightline. Nightline. Scotty McClue's Nightline. Nation, Nation Radio. Yes, indeed. Remember to spread the word during the week, of course. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue, live on Nation Radio, 96.3 on the FM. And uh, we are here from 10 o'clock sharp through until midnight every Sunday evening. Back to the telephones. David. Hi, Scotty. You are right, son? Yes, and I'm all right. What about yourself? Are you OK? I'm good, I'm good. Now, tonight was actually quite good because... You had Linda, Carol, and Anna from is it Dundee? Uh, Carol from Dundee and Anna from the West End. And Linda, and they're all connected, aren't they? We're all close connected. Uh, no, I don't think Carol's connected with Anna or Linda. But Carol and Anna sounds the same. They do. Oh, the right, do they? Do they? Gosh, heavens they, above. They do. They sound the same. But uh, so. I think it was Anna from Dundee speaking about the Minestrone Soup. <laughs> the Minestrone Soup? Anna? No, Anna from the West End speaking about the Minestrone Soup. That's <coughs> correct, Well, yes. because she's making sense about regular callers, like... Over, but over, well, but the old ones like myself, we all should get together. She can bring in mince for the soup. I can make mince and tortillas or spaghetti. Oh, the mince and tortillas, very nice, very nice. Do you know what makes? I'll tell you what makes a cracking one is uh, is the mince and the uh, the pasta le pen. Oh, very yeah, nice, and a big a big get, part of that. Oh, you I get stuck get, in. It's uh, wonderful. I used to get pasta and mince at school, secondary school. Yes. Pen. Yes, very uh, nice. Uh, yes. yes, very uh, nice. Beautiful, Scotty. Yeah, uh, honestly. Yes, and I do not remember, do not remember at school, very often the kitchen smell of cabbage. They used to do a lot uh, of cabbage. Well, yes, I like, um, I like my cauliflower and... Yes, my, cauliflower. Oh, cauliflower. Uh, cauliflower and white sauce uh, is a bit uh, of a winner. Stop it. You make me hungry. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat a bit of the cauliflower and white sauce. <laughs> Again, with Anna Jordan um, party about the Ministry of Soup, she was speaking about Michelle. Now, I'm not going to take Michelle down, but she was a, very, a wee bit right. We are regular callers. Yes, 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 of course they're regular callers. But what, what all Michelle's saying, Michelle's not getting the regular callers. All Michelle's saying is that we need to also have a mix of new callers uh, well, coming well, on all the that, time. We, we, we are there. You know, well, they're here. I mean, they're, they're, they're on right now. I mean, you know, I just, well, I can only take yeah. one caller at a time. I've got, I know, of course, son. I've got your son, 
son. It's your son. <laughs> no son, it's no problem, son. But uh, no, but I can only I can only take one caller at a time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Oh, right. Before I go, I can't come wrong. You're really busy. You're talking about this banning food. Scotty, if uh-huh. you want to ban food, right, here we go, people get wakes up in the morning, goes to work, eh, they want coffees in the street, drinking coffees, alright, they can drink coffee, I don't like, I don't even drink coffee or tea, I'll have one meal a day, right? But uh-huh. the point is, it's like, if you want to eat outside, alright, put your, all your trash in the bin. Put your trash in the bin, but why are you eating outside in the first place anyway? Well, some people maybe might wake up in the morning and not feel really that hungry in the first place. And right. then all of a sudden they're walking down the street and they think, I fancy maybe a Greg's, you know, a coffee. But again, like say I said to you, let's, let's ban coffee shops, but that'll never happen. <laughs> no, 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 but no, but coffee shops have been around since the 1700s. I mean, you know, it's it's very much. I mean, that's where they used to do Lombard Street in London. They used to do all their exchanges and everything in the coffee houses. So, I mean, I'm not talking about that. But what I'm saying is, go in and sit down and have your food in the coffee house or in the bakers. We used to go. In, we used to go into the bakers and sit down there in a wee restaurant. Of course. And you see? You know, uh, see, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have uh, maybe say, eat a wee bit in the street, put it in the bin straight away after you. Don't put your rubbish down the road. Don't throw no. it away, you know. Absolutely. Keep it clean. Good and for you. Says, we need uh, security. Like, the people that ran into the fag ban, came in the fag ban a long time ago, or that was good, it came in the fag ban, you know. The like, fag ban, yes. Yeah, so, so, now the next one is the, is the food ban in the street. Yeah, I get that. That's true. I, I do, Scotty, yes, of course. And they would do but well, instead of charging poor souls for parking at the work, they would do an awful lot better if they I wanted to, to, to find folk a tenner for eating in the street. Scotty, I know you're right. They shouldn't be charging people at cars at work. Come no. on now. Once you start... <laughs> Once you start hitting on the poor, you're going down the wrong road, I always say. Even David, the poor, even the poor, even the rich, should not need to pay for air parking. They're working hard. They are working hard, absolutely. Good for you. I'm going to have to dash. Dinky do. Love you, son. Love you. Love you lot, son. You take care of yourself. Dinky do. So there we go. Who loves your baby? Do you remember Kojak? Tremendous. 01418 To the telephones as quickly as possible. And uh, we will get the chit chat going. And David was saying, where are all the new calls? They're all coming on. Everybody is waiting there, but I can only speak to one person at a time so there you are remember everybody is always going to have a wee bit of criticism about something is going to want something other than what they've got and my answer to that would be if you can't have what you like then try and like what you have joe thank you there, scotty thank you, thank there. you how are you <laughs> not bad not bad um. Oh, just a great show crackin', tonight, Scotty. Really cracking show tonight, isn't it, Joe? A beauty. Uh, <laughs> uh, a couple of wee questions for you, Scotty. Ah. But I think first, uh, just on eating in the street, that's not yes. what we should be banning at all. We should be banning pajamas in the street. Pajamas? Be going. pajamas. Are folk wearing their pajamas in the street? They're wearing their pajamas in the street. Ah. Mental. Mental. Get out in their slippers. It's, it's not it's not how you'd imagine it. It, no. it, it doesn't look pretty at all. They're at getting all. lazy. They're getting lazy. Exactly. They're going uh, out to I've get got, the newspaper on their jammies. <laughs> I've got two serious questions for you, though, Scotty. Go um, for it, absolutely. First one, and, and I, I, I really want to hear your opinion on them. Uh, so the first one about Brexit. Yes. Uh, the, the, I don't think we're going to get a deal. I don't think we want a deal. Uh, I'm using the term we uh, loosely. Um, but do you think Boris is going to still drive the bus over the cliff on the 31st, regardless of the Ben Act? Well, and it would sec- be. Well, I'll, it, I'll, go, I'll, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. So, well, my second point was going to be with, uh, with actually Sweden have scaled back their monarchy. Do you think it's time for us 
to, to do the same when Lizzie goes? No. No, I don't. I, I most certainly do not because there's so much tied up in that. It's not a question of, and, and I, I, I object to you using her first name. You maybe know her a lot better than me, but I object to people using the first name like that informally. The title is Her Majesty the Queen. And regardless of the incumbent, the office of monarchy is the highest office in this land. And there's so much tied up in it here because the crown is the symbol of our authority. Now, that's not the English crown or anything like that. The crown is also the Scottish crown. So the two of them are tied up. So you can split the parliament. So if you're wanting that. independence, you can split. Yeah, but I'm also explaining it for other people listening. You can split the parliaments. There's not a problem with that. Um, and I think there are so many good positive reasons for uh, Scotland splitting its parliament and uh, self-administrating. But, um, you know, and self-determinating, self-determining, I should say, not yeah. determinating, self-determining, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we don't want to be determinating, no. But uh, self-determining, self-determination, if you like. I think, I so, think, Scotty, I that's, think that's what you've got. I a bit with the, with the Brexit thing, because uh, if they have any role, um, they should really be flexing the muscle at this point. No, 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 no. Hold on. We've got to be very clear about what we're, we're dealing with. In 1688, the monarchy were encouraged to give up their absolute right to the Constitution. And when William and Mary came over under what was known as the Glorious Revolution, that was the start of uh, constitutional monarchy. So that was when the monarch took a little bit of a, a back step and said, let the people have a say in how the country is run via their parliament. Okay? So until what, what, then, you had, you had absolute monarchy. When whatever the monarch said was the law, that's how it happened. So we've still yeah. kept the tradition of that, but we have parliamentary or constitutional monarchy. It's now, signing documents, so Scott. Well, yes, yeah. you've got the head of state, which is rather marvellous. So it's a super system because the head of state, although they say has given all the power to parliament, also can, um, uh, you know, choose the first lord of the treasury who uh, has the courtesy title of prime minister. Or, yeah. or if, 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 uh, if, if they are sent along by the parliament, then they can be invited to form a government by the monarch in the name of the monarch. So what you've then got is Her Majesty's government and they're kept in check by Her Majesty's opposition. I, I like so, that, Scotty, but how about, how about we keep them and is that figure head of state? but we just don't pay them anymore. No, no, you're not realising how this all works, right? We are not paying them very much at all. They are virtually self-financing. And the, 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 the relatively small amount that goes to, uh, to the civil list, we get billions back in trade and in tourism. Billions back. So, I mean, the monarchy... It really doesn't cost us. Yes, there's money goes out, but there's huge money comes back. Well, so do, it's a I bit like saying to your, me... Your there, well, well, it's a bit like saying to me, well, it's fact, it's not really my opinion. It's just a fact as how the system operates. Now, yeah. then the, also the function of the monarch is as the curator and custodian of the crown. Right. Do you see where I'm coming from? Therefore, our symbol of authority is in the custody of and entrusted to our monarch. Now, Queen Elizabeth has done a fabulous job of being curator and custodian of the monarchy. She's been in office now for uh, 66 years. A long time. 
So that's quite a bit of work she's put in. And apparently she is still very much to the fore, is a delight to work with, has a, has a lovely sense of humour and is pressing on with it. Her husband is 98 and he has just recently started to take a bit of a back seat. So when well, you've got people like we'll that... Not mention, be... We'll not mention the alleged Randy Andy. No, we'll not mention anything uh, out, out with talking about the monarchy because there's no requirement to, you know? So so what we're, what we're seeing here is that there's every reason the monarchy is probably more pivotal than it ever was right now, but should not... It was not part of the deal for, um, you know, senior officers of parliament to uh, be drawing the monarch into a political situation. No, yeah, well, I, I, that, that's good, Scott. Yeah, I, I like that opinion. Uh, thanks for answering my question. But back to the first one on Brexit. Is Boris going to drive the bus over the cliff regardless of what happens with the deal? That's what we don't know. It would be a very, very, very foolish thing to do and it would be very, very bad for the United Kingdom and could go as far as economic annihilation and, uh, and, and um, fragmentation of the UK, political fragmentation. I think, I think he's going to do it. I think that they're preparing for it. And uh, I'm a bit nervous about it, but we'll also I'm not actually it. sure. I'm not actually sure if he can do it. Well, I, yeah, I think it's illegal. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if he can do it. That's it, because wasn't that the case why we had all the, the, the set up, the cases, etc., so that you couldn't have a no deal Brexit? That's off yeah. the table. Well, it's just... And a, off the table, off the table should the... mean off the table, so we'll see. Yeah, definitely, Scotty, but... But as well, for we'll looking to... for something to do on the 31st of October, I would pop down to the Halloween shop and hire yourself a cosy. A, a <laughs> <cane> or something. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Lovely <laughs> talking to you, and, uh, and I hope that's helped. All the best. Thank you, do. Absolutely. Thank you, do, Absolutely, sir. Thank you, do. 01418110475. See if we get a few more calls on, folks. Uh, excellent programme tonight of course marvellous and very interesting to um, to hear your points of view um, if, if anybody wants to raise anything on what I've been saying there about the monarchy please feel free to do that not a problem now remember that gentleman very kindly said that's your opinion Scotty but in actual fact I'm just giving him the facts I have no agenda one way or the other Neil yes hello Scotty how are hello, you hello sir friend? excellent lovely to hear from you I haven't heard from yeah. you for too long yeah, it's been quite a while. I like to listen to others, that's why. Yes, uh, but we like to listen to you as well, Neil. Don't forget that. Well, I thought I, thought I would uh, phone up to give any listeners of your great programme uh, a surefire way of stopping smoking if they are trying to stop smoking. Excellent, Neil. We love this. Now, I've tried uh, patches. I uh -huh. since I was 14. Yes. I'm in my sixties now. I've tried patches, I've tried the chewing gum, I've tried uh, uh, the tablets you get, I won't mention the name of them. But the way I stopped a couple of years ago was to pinky promise my granddaughters. Oh, wow. Now, you can't break a pinky promise, Scotty. No, you cannot break a pinky promise. <laughs> Especially to your grandkids. No, you cannot. So no, because they'll remember it. Yes. Yes, but that's the free advice I'm giving out to. And they want to have people. their. They want to have their grandpa. Oh yes, yes. I had my my grandfather didn't smoke. He put a fag in his mouth at his wedding in 1910. He was born right. in 1881. He was 29. Uh -huh. He put a fag in his mouth, and my grandmother pulled out his mouth and said, "You're like a monkey. You're not having any of that." And that was the end of it. So he stopped smoking yeah. on his wedding day. 
Um, I, I have found it very difficult over the years to stop smoking. I mean, you're fighting the nicotine and you're also fighting the habit. And I think the habit is the most difficult thing to fight. You know, it is, because in actual fact, the addiction, although it's very powerful, is quite yeah. relatively light compared with, yeah. say, other drugs. So the nicotine addiction is relatively light, but it's very powerful. And you've got to yeah. remember that it was socially, when you and I started smoking, because I used yeah. to smoke as well, and I yeah. haven't smoked for about uh, 20 years, over 20 years, and I've never even had a craving because I, I, I gave them up by reading a book called Alan Carr's How to Stop Smoking and I read it twice and that did uh -huh. it for me because it got my mind right yeah it's your mind you've got to get right you've got to get your mind right yeah there's certain tablets I was on they do something to uh, you know the memory banks the, the thing that gives you the craving yes for the cigarettes it puts them to sleep, basically. Yes. You know, and that worked for me for a while. But after I'd finished the course, maybe get bored, maybe out with friends, I started to one cigarette, and that was me back on them again. Yes. And I'm, 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 very, very yeah. dangerous. And also, if you like a light refreshment, you know, once you've had a couple of drinks, yeah. somebody says, do, do you want a, a, a thing? I can, well, why don't know do me any harm? And, of That's course, it, yeah. you start talking nonsense to yourself. And the thing is, yeah. no, no, no. Now, I was still able to go to the pub, and um, uh -huh. people were smoking in the pubs in those days. And yeah, okay. uh, I had absolutely no interest whatsoever. It didn't make any difference. Uh -huh. Well, I've not had any... Oh, I still got the, the odd craving now and again because I'm not on any sort of uh, supplement, you know, to help me stop smoking. I just think of my granddaughters. Think of your granddaughters and... And Pinky Promise, I love it, Neil. And also say to yourself, I'm not interested. Yes, exactly. I'm I not interested. Sitting, sitting at my desk or whatever, and my desk was covered in ash and the Fag ash. The ash they looked so filthy. My, my, my dear old mother, God, God rest her, she wouldn't even pick up a packet of cigarettes. If I said, Mum, could you pass me my cigarettes? She wouldn't oh. even touch the packet. Good for her. Disgusting. 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 Wonderful. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. God <laughs> oh, bless her, that's, absolutely. That's, that's, that's my advice. That yes, is sir. fabulous. And thank you. And lovely talking to you. And take care of yourself. And dinky do. I'll call you again soon. Do, Neil. Thanks Bye. again. All the best. Bye bye, La. 0141 811 to the telephones. Keep your calls coming. I want to talk to you. I've got about uh, seven or eight minutes of the show left, and I do not want to waste a second of it. So, as quick as you can, let's hear from you. I'm getting great feedback on the old social media there. And uh, what we did do, we um, had the. Um, the poison pen that we got last week. We've still kept some copies of that if we ever need them. Back to the telephones. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Uh, Rob from Craig News. Rob, how are you, lad? Nice to hear you. I'm doing no bad because I've had a couple of painkillers here. Aha, yes, absolutely. And, of course, the show is very good for, for, for right. painkilling. Right. Right, I can listen. <laughs> De definite, definitely. Right, listen to this quickly, right? Uh, there were a lot of things I could spoke about, but it was very, very busy. But listen, listen to this. This is a, 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 I go to that guy, the guys, the, you know, you guys talking about smoking. Yes. Um, I was sitting, I was standing, standing beside an old couple, and uh, they were talking about, about smoking. And I overheard them saying that my, my husband had to, what found the best way of smoking. Best way of stopping smoking. Stopping right? smoking, yes. What do you think the answer was when I heard the... Go on. The heart, the heart attack. The way the heart attack, oh for goodness sake. And so, 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 along the line, I don't know many years along the line, I think this is maybe a message, but I had a... 12 years after the 60s, I had a heart attack. 
At least I'd, I'd left the one and a half roll ups because I was going to stop smoking. I uh-huh. left one and a half roll ups, four o'clock in the morning, between a heart attack at 60 years of age. Seven, oh. eight years ago, I was uh, 68. Uh, last week there, you know. Wow, no, good for you. Hey! So, Woo! Listen to this, quick, listen to this quickly. So, look, so the guy, so the, uh, after I had the heart attack, I was doing security and I was telling the guy the story. Aha! Uh-huh. I was telling one of, the, one of the workers, I was doing security, telling one of the, the workers this, what happened, you know, but the, uh, the best way to stop the smoke. You know, I swear to God, uh, he says, see the following time I came next. He says, uh, Rabbi, I said, no, can you cry me that much that because the, you know, the story I said about the best way to stop smoking. He stopped smoking this guy because of it. And that, that made you relating back to the story. You've, you've, anyway, you've maybe uh, saved somebody's I've life. Enjoyed, I've enjoyed, uh, it seems to be that way all the way. I see if I talk and stay in, stay in the straight and that narrow line. Uh, the only thing that bothers me is people think normal is normal. Now, see, 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 see if, it's, if it's doing the toilet on you, it means that uh, you're, you're in bed, you're, 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 you're upset and that's territory and all the rest of it. And same with yes. all the other ones, it's creeping in, creeping into humanity. It's us that's causing the problem. The politicians have got us thinking that pajamas uh, should be allowed and all this crap. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way, but it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me. Pajamas, it doesn't bother me. My daughter's ah. that. You know, what's clothes got to do with it? They should be more concerned about, you know, as I say before, what goes into their body, not on it. And don't don't judge a book by its cover. They're still, you know, they're still talking about the way people... Uh, I get told to cut my hair when I was 14 because this That's thing it. was creeped in. The, you know, the, the rat race was creeped in. You need to smarten yourself up. The oh, politicians right. have got us like that. The politicians uh-huh. have got us quickly. They've got us, they've got us like... See the thinking we've got? They've got us conditioned into thinking, you know, that, 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 that they're, they're right and ever need to. They've got us, they've got us under the... Under the well, they think they have anyway. There's going to be explosions of people, I think, you know, because they, they, can't, they, can't, they can't get this right. See them out, what's going on here? I don't know much about it. But there's nothing going to... There's some stuff going to be wrong, definitely. There always are. are. A, company, a company that keeps failing to be sacked altogether. Yes. <laughs> Yes, good for you, Rab. I'm gonna absolutely, absolutely. I I better dash off, but listen, I you take care of yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you, do that. Quality chat. Oh one four one eight double one oh four seven five. Sorry about the quality of uh, of Rab's phone there. Um, He was out and about, I see. And uh, we're going back to the telephones, though. I've still got a couple of minutes, and uh, we'll see if we can squeeze in a small one, as the Mrs. Never Tars of telling me. And I'm sure we can manage that. So there you are. So to your telephones and the telephone number once again. Oh one four one. Eight double one zero oh, four seven five. Back to the telephones, Joe. Oh, Scotty, I'll round things up very quickly for you. No uh, problem. People in pajamas, that's no problem. People can do what they want. Uh, eating in the uh, street. You need to have a pajama sandwich. party as well. You'll get people eating in the street. There, a wolf sandwich. It was in the Bruins, I believe. Uh, I love the. Br- Broken flask excuse. I love the broken flask. The broken flask. So I'm not going to broken work. flask. <laughs> uh, and what's the sensationalist from the the red tops? Is that they're basically stalking you, Scotty? They're stalking uh, diplomatic, me. Diplomatic immunity. Well, should they be diplomatic? Absolutely. Yes. As a Alan Carr should get a sequel, How to Stop Smoking, How to Not Smoke Again. How to Not Smoke Again, wonderful. Well, poor old Alan Carr has gone now uh, because uh, he smoked, Um, but his book was fantastic, wonderful. So there you are. I love the sound of silence. Uh, and we're on. going to hear the sound of silence right now because we're out of time I'll see you now that's it folks we are out of time what a fabulous fabulous show tonight join us next Sunday evening at 10 o'clock sharp live on Nation Radio keep it here keep it clear keep it Nation Radio just for you from the Wizard of the Big Switchboard and me Scotty McClue good night God bless dinky do and ta la 
Nation Radio. William, Pamela and Anthony were sold investments by banks and ended up losing money. Luckily, they contacted Goodwin Barrett and were able to claim back a total of £65,500. If you've lost money on an investment sold by a bank, even if you no longer have it or the paperwork, just text MONEY to 6677 to discover how much you could be owed. That's MONEY to 6677. Good morning. 